that's what I'm gonna do. Greetings, my friends, from Jackson. Actually, we're technically in Wilson, Wyoming, in the Jackson Hole region. If you saw last week's video, I spent the last, well, 24 hours, essentially, more or less, doing some fun things in the Jack in Jackson and in Jackson Hole area. Some of the more touristy things. We did horseback riding, we went to the rodeo, we did a scenic river float. The scenic river float ended just as the rain started, so that was pretty good timing. I'm picking up with this week's video as I head into Grand Teton Nas uh, National Park to camp and hike and do fun things. And this is like, this is gonna be, um, I think it's gonna be a fuller video showing you kind of the one end of the spectrum with staying in Grand Teton and the versus the other and you'll see more what I mean about that uh, in a little bit but tonight we're camping we're camping at Coulter Bay campground which according to my GPS about an hour and 15 minutes drive from here I want to get there soon it's 320 uh, but I don't have any provisions so I'm going there's a target right on the way I saw it uh, so I'm gonna stop at target we're gonna get some ice we're gonna get some some food I have um, actually most of my lunch from the river float that was included with my trip that um, I can eat for dinner tonight but I just want to get ice and just a few things just to have um, for safety I can definitely go to the store again I'm thinking in the next few days but uh, tomorrow night I'm not camping but I'm still staying on in the park at a very nice lodge so it's gonna be like I said two ends of the spectrum and I think I'm condensing it into one video for you um, so let's head to Target let's grab some provisions and uh, hope that the rain passes through by the time we get there that's the hope okay here we go just in case you're wondering what the Target looks like in Jackson Hall <laughs> looks like this this Target is way more spindrift than we have at any of our stores lemon limeade Lime and mint. I gotta find some place where I can get all those flavors. I'm just gonna do my haul in store here. I've got some kombucha and grapes, guacamole, carrots. The houses they had were really big, so I need to go to another store. They don't have ice here, so I'm just gonna go to the grocery store up the road and hope that they have hummus. I've got this salad. I gotta try these little cheese crackers. Never had their hearty dippers, they look good. And Hmm, what to get? Let's do. Yeah. Alright? A little trail treat. Okay, let's see some tissues and some reusable snack bags. Picnic bench, you've got a picnic table, I should say. A, uh, what's it? Fire ring, sorry, my brain stopped working for a minute. And a bear box. You can kind of see how close you are to everybody else. It's cozy, you know. I kind of like that when I'm in bear country, though. <laughs> it's like safety and numbers sort of thing. They have lots of signs everywhere for how to be bear aware. And this is a full service campsite, so there's lots of services. There's a dumping station, potable water. We're right next to the bathroom. I'll take you over there, we'll have a look. Here's a little comfort station, as I call them. So right next to my campsite, and they do have potable water spigot, so I'm gonna fill it. It's so pretty out. I love it. All right, here's the bathroom sitch on the inside. Hello, I'm gonna put my sweatpants on, because it's chilly. Got flushing toilets and sinks, and it's pretty roomy. Very tidy, like it. Hi, we have kombucha. We're charging things. I just got kind of unpacked from my last stay, which I stayed in, if you saw the last week's video, I stayed in like a, I don't know whether to call it, I think it's like a, it was a B&B. &B. There was breakfast, so it was a B&B. &B. Yeah, I stayed in a B&B. &B. 
So I just unpacked all my stuff and not much to unpack to be honest. Really easy drive up here from Jackson, about an hour. And uh, easy check in. And the thing with these campsites is they book up really fast. I didn't have this campsite a few days ago. I had a different campsite that I couldn't car camp there. It was like I'd had to hike into a tent pad. I couldn't sleep in my car. They don't allow it. And that was the only one I could find when I decided this was what I was doing this week, this weekend. Um, so I took it because I wanted to have the experience of camping in Grand Teton National Park. Well, two days ago, I decided, you know what, maybe there's some last minute cancellations. So I checked and lo and behold, I got a campsite at the campground that I most was most interested in. So I think I said already, this is the Coulter Bay campground. They gave me lots of fun information. It's actually a pretty well established place. They have, um, it's right on the, oh sorry, it's right on the, that was upside down. It's right on the lake, Jackson Lake, but I haven't gone down to the lake yet to be honest. Anyway, my plan now, I wasn't sure if I would have service here, which would have really been a bummer if I didn't, but I actually have three bars of LTE, so I, I'm going to now make a full plan for tomorrow. Um, as I mentioned, I'm staying at a schmancy, I mean, we're really like running the gamut of experiences between tonight and tomorrow, because as far as I can tell, this is the least expensive way to stay in Grand Teton National Park, with the exception of backpacking. I don't know how much those permits are, but the one night stay at this campground and all the campgrounds that I looked at, uh, is like 48 50 bucks give give or take a night which is a lot for a campsite to be honest this is a pretty average campsite i mean it's got nice facilities but it's a lot of money but that's that's what you get for camping inside the national park and then where i'm staying tomorrow at the jenny lake lodge well let's just say it's some order of magnitude more expensive than that and includes a five course dinner and breakfast, I think. So when I did the math on that, I was like, okay, it's still a lot more than I want to spend, but I really, really wanted the experience of both sides of the spectrum, and I really wanted to stay at Jenny Lake, and that campground is impossible to get a reservation in. You have to book that, like, right when they open up reservations, however many months in advance, and I never know my plans more than, really more than, like, I would say one to two months in advance. It's when I usually have, like, a general idea Sometimes it's only one week in advance. Sometimes it's only two days in advance. For instance, past Tuesday morning, I don't know what I'm doing. It's Sunday evening. I don't have a plan. I don't have reservations. I don't have campgrounds. I don't have a flight path, a road path, I should say. No plans, so. That's not today's problem, though. Today, we are going to look at my All Trails map. I think what I want to do is hike around the Jenny Lake area because that's where I'm going to end up in the afternoon and I'm going to try to do a longer hike. I'm a little, I don't want to say I'm like scared, but I'm a little nervous because in all the recent trail reviews on all the trails around that area, there's been bear sightings. It doesn't sound like bear encounters, but bear sightings. And I, to honest, to goodness you guys I have no desire to see a bear in person like if I do and it's safe and okay fine but I'm not going out looking for bears <laughs> like and it sounds like there are brown bears on the trail which are less of an issue if you run into one than a grizzly bear we are in grizzly bear country as well as black bear country so I don't know but it also sounds like these are extremely popular trails and I would definitely not be the only person on these trails. And then that seems more doable to me. And all of these reviews make it sound like the bears were really nonplussed about people being around and there wasn't an issue. But I, it's still like, I've got my bear spray and it's just still like nervous about it. But for now, that's what I'm doing. I'm here, I'm relaxed, I feel comfortable. It's quiet, people are pretty quiet. And uh, I think it's gonna be a really restful evening. This is awkward. I just, 
to, in order to film it. I don't want to take my shoes off. So I'm just sitting awkwardly here. I'm packing my day pack for tomorrow. And I thought I'd show you what I'm bringing. I've got the usual suspects. I don't have a trail map for this. I'm going to bring the, um, the one that the, they provide at the entrance. Because it does have trails in it. And it's better than nothing in a pinch. It's not mush, but it's better than nothing in a pinch. I need to get this stuff out of my other day pack. I bring the big one because I've earmarked an 18 mile hike. <laughs> Don't know if I'm going to do that whole thing. But it starts out from the trailhead that I want to end up at for convenience for later. This is a little waterproof bag, by the way. It's from um, Sea to Summit. It's helpful. I keep my compass and my paper map in there. You just, you know, one of those good to have sorts of things. Every reviewer, almost everyone, has said they've seen a bear. Either a brown bear or a grizzly bear. And none of them have seemed alarmed. And none of them have had issues. Now, I don't know if the people who aren't posting have had issues. I'm honestly not sure. But, I don't know. I just don't know, you guys. I want to try it. I think that's it. I just want to try it. I am going to bring bear spray, and you better believe it's going to be clipped onto the, my front strap for easy access. So it's going to be a big, heavy bag, but it'll be all good. And I like having it packed the night before. This is a very long trail, so I want to get an early start. It sounds like it's pretty popular in the first few miles, or like on this very well-worn trail around the Jenny Lake, so I don't think I'll have any issue at that part. But again, if I feel uncomfortable in any way, I'll just turn right around and head back down. That's always, always, always available. You do not have to do the whole thing of anything ever. Ever, ever. Okay, well, the bag is packed, and I'm going to set it aside. Oh, I need to grab the first aid kit, but yeah, good to be prepared. And also, nice to, like, pack the night before so you're not panic packing and forget something important. It's going to be a heavy bag, though. <laughs> no joke. This is, like, the park guide, I guess. Um, they do give you tips about what to do if you encounter a bear, um, including right here. I'll just read it for you. I don't know if you can see it. Um, if you encounter a bear, slowly back away. Do not use bear spray. If the bear charges at you, this is rare. Stand your ground and use bear spray, and they tell you how to use it. But I do recommend watching tutorials on YouTube or wherever. Um, so there's the information about that there. And then if a but that's rare to happen if a bear charges and makes contact with you very rare. Fall into your stomach and play dead. They taught us that at Yosemite when I was in 8th grade. And we did a backcountry camping trip. That's what I learned, these things. I learned them then. If a bear stalks you, then attacks. Extremely rare. Fight back. Oh, it's not. And if a bear attacks you in your tent, extremely rare. Fight back. Well, a bear's not going to attack me in my car. Especially with all the, I don't think so, with all these people around. But, um... Yeah, you can make noise, you can sing. Um, again, because there are bears here, I'm going to kind of decide on how my hike progresses based on how many other people are on the trail and what I see. So I'm more than happy to head back. Also, you can tell the difference between a black bear and a grizzly bear mostly by their, the hump on the grizzly bear's neck. It's a pretty defining feature. And also the face structure like the bone structure is a little bit different it's a more flattened in on a grizzly bear where it's kind of a pointier snout on a brown bear yeah so there's also moose and foxes and apparently wolves i don't know <laughs> and lots of birds of prey and and things like that too but best to keep a safe distance you know i've packed it in i will get out uh in a little bit to go use the facilities one last time brush my teeth all that jazz but uh, it started rumbling, and I just got an alert from my... I just downloaded a new um, ma uh, weather radar. I still don't really know how it works, like if it gives any sort of advanced forecast, but it, it is really good with the radar. It's kind of hard to show you. Uh, but it's um, called My Radar. And actually, one of the women who was on the raft today, the same raft as me, her son is a pilot, and he uses this. 
I was like, okay. Because I use the radar on my weather bug app all the time, but this feels a little more accurate. So yeah, rain is coming through. Yeah, it'll be here in about 15 minutes, it looks like. Uh, so yeah, what I did is, if you've watched any of my previous camping videos, you guys know I love my little electric kettle. I plugged it into my Jackery. My phone is done charging. All my lamps are done charging, so that's good. I made myself a nice big cup of tea. It is chilly. Um, my watch says 55, but I think it's... Oh, weather forecast. Drag the panel down to view extended forecast information. Oh! There is a forecast! Oh my gosh! Well, that's nice. Yeah, it's going to be kind of rainy tomorrow. <laughs> Lightning in the afternoon. Hopefully I'll be back by then. I might not do the whole 18 miles, you guys. I'm just going to start and see where I go. And, yeah. Anyway, mint tea with honey. Just lovely. And I just remembered when I was... So, I don't know if I mentioned in this video. It's been a whirlwind. I'm just now starting to decompress a little bit. The last couple hours, just kind of like sitting and getting organized and relaxing and eating. Oh my god, I had hummus and chips. It's like a little second dinner, second supper. I don't know. Actual supper. That sandwich was still part of Whatever. I ate some more. Chips dipped in hummus. It's just like so good. I did buy carrots too, but I had the chips. <laughs> anyway, I remembered. All right, so to give you a context of time, two days ago, so Friday, I was in New York City at Peloton Studios all day. I flew home late that night, very late actually, my flight was delayed too, and then I turned right back in the morning, went right back to the airport and flew out to Jackson, which is where Blue was waiting for me. And when I was in New York City, I went to Levain Bakery and bought a cookie and thought, I'll save this for whatever. It's been in my backpack ever since, I'm sure it's still good. It's, oh, I'm going to try not to get crumbs everywhere. It's a peanut butter, it's a huge cookie. I'm excited. So I'm going to have this cookie, I'm going to have my tea, I'm going to watch a little YouTube. I actually have service here, but I want to save my, um, I want to save my, uh, what's it called? Battery. So I'm going to turn the phone on airplane mode so it's not sucking up the battery and you go to my downloaded videos. Uh, because I pay for YouTube premium and highly recommend if you watch YouTube videos and travel a lot uh, because it's a really nice way to have YouTube available to you when the internet is not. Oh, there's two new videos I really want to watch. So I'm going to watch some videos and just like chill, eat some cookie, drink some tea, have a good old merry time. That's what's happening. And that's going to be it for the rest of the night. So I probably won't show you anything else tonight. This is the camping portion of the video. Uh, and <laughs> I'm just happy as a clam. I love my little cocoon car. Totally so stoked that I was able to grab this campsite last minute. Because I really didn't want to sleep in a tent. I don't mind tent camping. I just like, if I have my car, I'm going to sleep in it. Because it's like my little home away from home. And I just feel so secure in it. You know what I mean? Plus, if it's storming, nobody really wants to be in a tent if it's lightning. You know? You just don't. All right, friends, I'm going to eat my cookie and do all those things, and I'll, I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Oh, you get the double wave. Good night. <laughs> okay. Wild woman this morning. Good morning, friends. We are at the Spring Lake parking lot. It is just a few minutes before 7, and... I gotta be honest, I'm still kind of deciding what I'm doing. Um, I'm just gonna start off on the trail because it starts off going around Jenny Lake and then I'm gonna take it from there. I am not only bear aware, I am bear scared. So, <laughs> um, I know that I'm properly equipped in all of the things that I'm bringing for sure, but also in my um, attitude. Like, happy to turn around, happy to change course. If I don't feel secure or whatever. So, yeah. Had a good sleep for the most part. I don't know why. I feel a little, like, I think I'm just still waking up. I feel a little wrecked. But I slept well and it was real quiet for being such a crowded 
relatively close-ish kind of campground. It, it was very quiet. There goes some folks on the trail, too. Yeah, I gotta bundle up. It's cold. It's like 40 degrees. I'm gonna try out a new system where I'm gonna wear my little fanny pack in the front to hold my phone and my camera just for easier access. So, I'm gonna try that system. And I'll, uh, we'll see you out there. Okay. Alright, my friends. Well, I'm not sure exactly what we're doing, but we're gonna do something. We're gonna head towards Cascade Canyon. We're gonna be, you know, mindful. And, oh, just know you can't bring your dogs here. I'm not climbing anything, so that should be fine. Here we go. It's uh, pretty spectacular, even from the parking lot. <laughs> give you a quick little glance there. Yeah, you know, it's, it's casual. Right out of the gate, my friends. Right out of the gate. Car's right there. <laughs> okay, it's already worth it. Whatever, we go from here. It's fine. We already got a view. Well, we've had a few since the beginning. Uh, there's Jenny Lake. Let me flip you around and be so much better. There you go. Getting a little ominous looking. That's the direction I'm heading in. But it'll be okay. Like I said, prepared with all my gear, but we'll turn around if necessary. Trying not to be totally freaked out that so far I'm the only one I've seen on this trail. <laughs> but I have seen people tracks that look fairly fresh considering it rained a bunch last night. So that makes me feel a little bit better. But yeah, the trail's really, I mean, we just went through like a, we, you and me, just went through like a wooded portion, but it's pretty easy keel here. Nothing much difficult. Oh, it is so pretty though. You guys, it's just so pretty. Oh, it's looking rather ominous though. <laughs> Let me flip you around. Look at this. Ominous. Pretty sure when I was further back on the trail, I could see a little white head popping out the top. From far away, it was little. I'm sure it was big. I think it's an eagle's nest. I think there's an eagle up there. Cool. The moodiness, you guys. The moodiness. Pretty flower. Nice backdrop. I'm trying to make a decision on what to do here. It's raining pretty hard. Looks like it's gonna rain. The boat shuttle, it's right there. But yeah, I think I'm gonna go up a little bit, at least, to Hidden Falls. And then I know I can just come right back down here or just walk around the lake. It's just, it's raining. Little bit of hiking distance to Hidden Falls. I think if we keep going up, we'll see it. Um, I've got my full rain kit on. I've got my pants and my. Oh my gosh, it's really coming down. Hug myself under this tree for the moment. Just trying to keep myself as dry as possible. Um, down by the boat dock, I had a couple bars, so I was able to look at the radar. And I don't know, you guys, it's not good. I've seen uh, two pairs of couples come down the trail already. I'm gonna go up just a little bit further and then make a decision where I can see the sky better. I haven't been like rumbling or anything, but I realize it's gonna be so loud that it falls down. And that's okay. <laughs> um, this might be a sign to turn around and go back. Uh, I don't know. Let me think about it. Okay, this is 10,000. Look, I see the sky. I'm gonna keep going up a little bit more. You know we love a good bridge, trail bridge. Ugh, the water is so clear. It's so pretty. Okay, this, this is what? The beauty, a wonder. Oh my goodness. I decided to come towards Inspiration Point, which I think is just a little ways for
just don't know. Oh, I'm still zoomed in. Sorry. I think I might do this loop and then do the lake instead. I just going up into this does not seem like a good plan, especially when I was already feeling kind of nervous about it. I'm just like, I'm still gonna get in a lot of miles and see a lot of views. This is it's not good. It's raining again. It's gonna continue raining, I think, pretty much most of the day. That's what it looks like on the radar, but that could be wrong. I've gone three miles. Honestly, there's not much to see with the weather like this. So I'm enjoying myself, but I'm also like, I could go back to my car and make a cup of tea and have a donut and just I actually have work to do. I have to, I have an edit. I have to, I could just like work and stuff until my time to check into my reservation, find a nice lookout to park in, see the weather rolling in and out. I'm gonna go maybe half a mile to one mile further in and then decide. But uh, I've seen, there's lots of people on the trail now, so, and only wildlife I've seen is chipmunks and birds. <laughs> so we're doing okay. I think I thought of a plan. It's a little loud here, so I'll tell it to you in a less loud place. This is what the trail looks like. I'm curious. This is where I'm the Cascade Mountains Trail now. I think that's what it's called. Cascade something. Just maybe it's just a Cascade Trail. There's some close to insanity. Look at this. I suppose that's beaver work. Do you? No, I don't really know. Look at that. Just when she turns around, it's good. It's all right. Here's what happened. I got up past that place where I showed you the possible, it's probably not a beaver dam, it's probably just a tree fall gathering in that spot, but uh, a little bit of past that, and I was like, nope. The gut said, nope. Turn around, go back. And you know what? That doesn't happen to me very often when I have such a strong gut feeling. And maybe it's nothing, but when I get it, I heed it, because that will not scare you off. So new plans, I'm heading back down exactly the way I came, back to the boat launch. And I'm either gonna take the ferry across the lake, if that feels like something fun to do, and I'm still gonna go hike back to the car on the other side of the lake, or I'm gonna walk around the whole lake, which is like, I don't know, six miles from that point, I think. So we'll see. Oh, so the trail is pretty moderate throughout. It's a slight incline. It's not too much. The only like somewhat technical part is here. It's really not terrible. You just gotta be careful if it's wet. You know? I think the sun coming out to me, like I, at the deeper I went up into that mountain, the rainier it got, and then then I turn around, the sun comes out. It's like, yep, made the right choice. Even if it's sunny the rest of the day, made the right choice. I did see a lot of that. Wow. It is possible that we're looking at Grand Teton right there. Uh, if my map reading skills are correct, which is, you know, a 50 50 chance for me. <laughs> this is my decision. I'm going to do the boat. Oh, cool. Merch 
Well, at least I want to go to the bathroom. That's for sure. This is somebody's thing. The photographer's thing. I haven't turned to me for the visitor center. That's pretty neat. Yeah, I'm real, real happy I came back and took the boat because that was fun. We got to see the Osprey. And I just think it's going to be a crummy rest of the day. But we'll see. I'm going to head back now. I bought some stickers. I'll show you later. But uh, I'm going to head back towards my car. I think it's a couple miles, but I really, I'm really not sure. <laughs> so we'll find out. This is me. It shows you the mountains here. Good. So we're at Jane. Come on, Jane. 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 I'm not sure. Oh, see, it says Grand Teton. I mean, it's not. Thank you so much. You guys need Cool. So, this is where I was hiking, and I turned around. It's a little, they have this like little tiny, I don't know if you can call it a beach, but it's like a little inlet. You could sit in there if that water wasn't freezing, which I'm sure it is. Whew, I overheard the boat staff at the dock when we came in saying that it was going to be real rainy for the rest of the day and calling it monsoon season. Oh, look at this cool rock. So we're back on like a regular trail now. Uh, and I think it's a couple miles, I guess we'll find out. All right, friends, let's look at it now. Let's see where the boats are coming out. That's where I was hiking right there, up that bit. Now look at it. Hmm, I think I made, I think I made the right choice. Are you saying that? I'm not doubting myself. It's just how my inner dialogue goes. Anyway, this is very lovely. The even keeled forest trails next to the lake. Y'all know I like that. I like the lakeside forest trails. It's a mood. Can you see it? Oh my god, I just passed by the mama there and her two cubs. Hey bear. Let's keep going. I didn't. I see the cars, I see the parking lot. Oh my goodness. I walked right past. I'll tell you when I've calmed down. I walked right past two cubs and a mama bear. Right on the side of the trail. Whew, and then I, and so I cleared them and I walked calmly, but you know, with purpose by them. I just like practically like, well, I didn't run, but I walked really fast after that to get back to my car. Oh my gosh. Guess I had my wildlife encounter. Ooh, they were nonplussed. Well, the cubs were a little spooked. That's how I heard, knew where they were, because I heard something like clamor up a tree, and the two cubs had like clambered up these two big trees, and I saw them. I'd already passed them. They were like in my peripheral. And Mama Bear was up on the right, off the trail a little bit. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm my phone's about to die. Awesome. Don't worry, I always hike with the spare battery. We made it. Yay. Yeah. Right, I got my phone charging and my water boiling. Tea is ready to go. Donut at the ready. I think I'm probably going to pull out one of my salads too. I'm pretty hungry. We got a little bit of a view. We're just closing up the Um window covers. Hi friends. Almost made the whole gosh darn hike without seeing a bear. I know some people are like that's what they want. They want to see the wildlife. I liked seeing the chipmunks and the squirrels and the birds and I liked seeing the eagle in the way up high nest and the osprey flying over the water with the fish in his talons. I have no interest in seeing a bear or a moose on the trail. I've seen, I've come, I've had plenty of moose encounters. <laughs> Story for another day. In Utah, not, you know, not here. There are moose here and elk and all that. I'm not, I don't know, half a mile almost back to the car. And I'm just kind of hoofing it up the trail and I hear something on my left. And I'm alert, I'm looking, you know, but bears are brown and so are trees. <laughs> so they kind of came flushing. And I hear something out of my left ear on the left side of the trail that sounds like something clamoring up a tree. 
And so I don't even, I don't know why I had the sense not to fully turn. I just kind of turned to my peripheral, just into my peripheral vision, just a little bit. And there, right off the side of the trail, not five feet away, five to 10 feet away, are two baby bears climbing up trees, looking at me like they are scared out of their minds. And I'm like, oh no, if there's two scared baby bears, there's gonna be a protective mama bear not too far away. So I keep my steady pace. I was walking pretty at a nice clip anyway, because I was like real ready to be done with the hike. And I just looked forward and I started just walking up, you know, steady as she goes, knowing that mama bear is probably not far away. And I start my, hey bears, hey bear. It's the thing you say, don't ask, it's the thing you say. And lo and behold, not 15, I don't know, steps up the trail on the right, mama bear starting to hoof it down, I think, to baby bears who were scared and climbing up the trees. But she didn't come into the trail. She was walking on the right side of the trail in the brush. And I just went right past her, real steady. I did not run. I did not panic. Just walked right past her. Hey bear, hey bear. And kept on my merry way. I hay bared the whole way back to the car even though I was pretty sure that those were the only bears I was going to see at that point. I just, you know, I didn't know if there would be any more, and I just hay bared all the way back. And you can believe that I picked up my pace after I knew I was safely past the bear situation. Uh, then I picked up my pace. I didn't run, but I picked up my pace. But yeah, I got a real good look at those baby bears. I didn't really see Mama Bear. She was in the brush, and um, I'm grateful I didn't really see her. She was on all fours in the brush, so she wasn't like in attack position or anything like that. There was no need to pull out the bear spray. I was going my way. She was going her way. It was fine. But the baby bears, I mean, I saw them for a split second right before I, un like, my mind registered was happening, and I hoofed it. You know, I started going straight with a, more of a purpose. I had a real good look at them. They're they were cute, but no thanks. <laughs> Two of them, one a lighter brown and one a darker brown, and I didn't really get a good look at what kind of bears they were, but hanging off trees on the side of the trail looking at me like, what are you? <laughs> I'll get my tea's ready, hold on, I gotta pour my hot water. Okay, I got my boiling water in. I've still got the winter wake-up tea from Trader Joe's, but it's all right. And I'm opening a new honey today. This one from Boulder, Colorado. Sounds delicious. I think I pretty well squished my huckleberry donut. I bought this in Jackson yesterday at Snake River. Oh, it looks good still. <gasps> this looks fantastic. I'm gonna have this with the tea and then I might go ahead and eat my salad. I might hang out here for a while to be honest. Um, it's a nice spot and I think I'll stay pretty well shaded and I can finish my edit. I have a big edit I need to finish because I'm staying in a lodge with, I think it has Wi-Fi. I hope it does tonight. Otherwise, I'll figure it out. I can um, upload it another way if I really need to. But uh, I'd like to finish that video so that I can um, have it ready to go and just once I can check into the lodge, I can really relax. So yeah, we did, um, back to the hike. You know what? It was fine. <laughs> I survived. <gasps> I'm not, you know, I don't, you know, I don't know. The one thing I was like so scared of was seeing bears and then I go right past like mama and baby bears on the trail. Come on. Like really? <sighs> but yeah, it's okay. I did about eight miles. Um, it's... Hold on, I'm waiting for my Garmin to send the information to my watch. I've already gone 23,000 steps today. That seems like a lot. Oh, there it is. Eight and a half miles I did. Um, and I turned off my watch and my, like, hiking, you know, the hiking tracking or whatever while I was on the boat, so it didn't count that. A thousand feet total ascent, so not much. But uh, here you can see... Well, I don't really want to unplug my phone, but you can see <laughs> where I went across the bridge. So it tracked my heart rate over that, but it didn't track my, I didn't have it actively tracking my mileage at that point. Wow, where I booked it after the bears. <gasps> so I saw the bears right about here, and my car was up there. So I was so close, so close. 
Like I said, less than half a mile. Anyway, it's all it's all good. So that's about half of what I was gonna do originally. And ironically, originally I wouldn't have come back that way, so I might not have seen any bears. <laughs> I don't know if I'd gotten farther up in the canyon and up into the that here uh, from all the trail reviews. The last two miles of the um, trek up to Solitude Lake is like straight up here uphill and a real ball buster. But I am glad I turned around. It's possible it could have been nice. I don't know. It's I don't even know which part of the mountain I was at now because I'm just looking at the full range. And half of them are shrouded in clouds and the other half aren't. But it felt like, this, you know, when you have that gut feeling, you're like, I think I'm going to turn around now. Then you turn around now. All right. I'm going to let my tea steep for another minute. I'm going to eat my donut and just like calm down for a second. Actually, I'm not, I didn't get scared. I did get a little scared when I was realized what was happening, but not in a panicky kind of way. And then I think lo logically I knew I would probably wouldn't see any bears more, but I, you know, still went pretty fast. I did tell, there. I only saw one other person coming down the trail at that point. There had been a, quite a few people on the trail up until then. And it was like a fisherman person, a fisher guy. And, um, I saw him maybe about like a third of the, I was like maybe a third of a mile away from the bear, so pretty close to my car, only like two tenths of a mile back to my car. And I was like, you know, dude, there's there's mama bear and her babies on the trail up, up a third of a mile. I don't know if they'll still be there, but I just want to give you a heads up. And he was like, oh, I'm not going there. I was like, smart. Anyway, all good, all good. So yeah, I'm going to hang here. This is a nice spot. It's like a little overlook, like a scenic overlook. I can definitely, I'm definitely allowed to sit here and probably take my shoes off and get my pillow out and sit right here with my computer and finish some stuff up and eat my little thing and then we'll go check into Jenny Lake Lodge, Schmancy Express. But I'm gonna sit here and enjoy this now. Okay, you guys. <laughs> Cute. I think I'm staying in one of those cabins. It's like an hour and a half before check-in time. We're gonna see. Now you can see. It's a little sunny, still a little gloomy. It's kind of a little bit of everything today. So this right here is my cutie patootie cabin. The buckwheat. It's uh, side by side with the buttercup. But we're at, we, you and me, we're in the, the buckwheat. And let's take a look inside. I opened up all the um, curtains and stuff so we can have some better light. How cute is this? So apparently they're uh, celebrating their 100 year anniversary, which I had no idea of. And um, it's just so sweet. Uh, so here's a map of the property. You can see that's where I am. And there's all these little cabins all around. They have their own horse horses. And oh, look, coffee, hot chocolate. Tea, real nice big bed, seating area. I don't know if these come with it or not. <laughs> you never know what's like a gift. And what's a, well, you can take that, but we're gonna charge you for it. They left me some sort of little, little gift. So I gotta look at that. And then over here, there's a mini fridge and um, a little safe, a mirror, hello, and a sweet little bathroom. Lots of fun stuff, and I am definitely going to be getting in that bathtub because that sounds lovely. Look, a dental kit, how nice. So I actually haven't even like packed up to bring stuff in yet, so I think I'm going to do that. I wish there was a way I could. I don't think there's any internet, which is unfortunate because I kind of need some internet <laughs> to finish my work and stuff. Uh, but that's okay. We'll figure it out. It's just so sweet, I love it. Should we see what this is? I already read the note, because I was curious. And thanks for celebrating our 100 year anniversary with us. And inside, oh. So it was originally, I just saw, when I was in checking in, in the main lodge, I was just seeing that there was some information about the, um, how it was Danny Ranch originally. So cool. That's so nice, little gift, I love that. I like how I can have my car outside too. Just see it right out that window. I know this is like pretty safe area, but it's just peace of mind just being able to look out a window and see it parked. 
I'm gonna go grab things I need and get settled. Hello! Do you like having your picture taken? Is that nice? You guys, these are the corrals. Horseback riding's included with my stay. And I signed up for a ride tomorrow morning. Yeah, how sweet are these horses? I'm so excited. I get another horseback ride in Jackson. So, figure that into the cost too. Pretty sweet. I was just coming back from the, the corrals and, uh, that's what they call them, like stable corrals, and uh, packing up some stuff to bring in from my car and started downpouring. I would still be out in the trail. I would definitely still be out in the trail. Oh, it's also hailing a little bit, by the way. Kind of the hail here. Okay, I just, I have to show you this. I'm just kind of settling and unpacking. It's like, I wonder if there's anything in this drawer. And I open it, I was like, woo! It opens like a secretary uh, desk and has a little book about the history, which I'm totally gonna read. Um, some wildlife awareness, some stationery, a little mirror that pops out. This whole thing comes out and it's a vanity. <gasps> what? That's neat. Unexpected furniture situation. How cool is that? I was wondering what this random chair by the uh, mirror is for. It's for the women who put on their face. I don't do that lately, but yes, cool. All right, my friends, it doesn't seem fair to not tell you the price of this when I'm comparing it to camping, which I told you the price of was $50. My campsite last night was $50. This is like the top of the top expensive things you can stay in at Grand Teton National Park. So for this cabin, all things included that you saw, I got the rate of $869 for one night. Now, before you die of shock, because that is a lot, consider this. It includes five course meal, which I'm guessing is like valued at about $120. It's usually when I feel like that with or without alcohol. I don't know if that includes alcohol or not. Gourmet breakfast, horseback ride. I paid over $100 for the horseback ride the other day. And is that it? I think that's it. It's still very, very expensive, but those things included do knock the price down in my, in my mind, this is like a five-ish hundred dollar a night kind of accommodation, considering the location and the property. Um, and then they bump it up to include a package, which includes all those other things. So you, you figure out for you if it's worth it or not. I really, really wanted to have this experience of the like expensive lodge in the, <laughs> in the middle of the uh, Teton, Grand Teton National Park. I realize it's obscenely expensive, uh, but you know, it's also Jackson Hole. And Jackson Hole, in my experience, everything costs a lot more than you think it should. <laughs> like hotel, one night. The hotel I stayed in, uh, if you saw the last video, I think that was like three, 350? Three, 300? No, yeah, 350-ish. And that wasn't nearly as nice as this. And, uh, but it was right in the middle of Jackson, so there's that. Uh, so just consider when you're coming here, even just for camping, everything is at a markup. It's a very, very popular destination area for, to be quite frank, for a lot, a lot of really wealthy people. Um, and they cater to that. But also, you can find places to wild camp. It is a little bit hard, but you can find places to stay. And you can find restaurants that are less expensive. And you can do your own food and make it a reasonable, reasonable cost. Like, my whole cost of yesterday for, like, the food that I ate and my campsite was probably, like, $55. Right? <laughs> 50 for the campsite. $5 for the, for the hummus and chips. Uh, but, uh, gonna be a little bit different of a dinner tonight. So... This is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to, I have almost five hours till dinner because I couldn't get an re early reservation. I'm going to decompress. I think I'm going to take a nice bath and just whew, relax. I'm going to do really nice yoga practice, maybe a yin yoga, get all cozy in my sweats. I'm going to finish my work because there is Wi-Fi 
that also adds some points um, for me, for sure, as somebody who needs the internet. And the Wi-Fi is fast and seems effective, so we'll take that. And finish my work, and then I'm going to mosey on over for dinner. As a person who travels mainly for outdoorsy things and hiking and such, I don't really have nice clothes. I think I'm in the last reservation, though, so... I'm just going to wear, like, all black, because when in doubt, just wear all black. And it's hiking clothes, but we just won't tell anybody, and I'll be clean. I'm going to clean my whole self. Um, and I think I'm also, when, I want to run out and get my mug, but I might um, brew a cup of tea in a little bit, too. Because that sounds real nice. Okay, my friends, I'm going to do all those things, and uh, I'll take you to dinner with me. We'll see how that is. I'm so excited I get a horseback ride tomorrow. I did not know that was included. That makes it even better. I, I knew it was an expensive thing, and it was just like, okay, well, weigh the odds of how much I'm spending on other nights of this trip. I'm camping for the next few nights, and that'll be a, a future video, I think. I don't actually have plans yet. That's another thing I have to figure out. What I'm doing tomorrow, because I don't know. <laughs> but um, it'll even out a little bit over the course of the trip that I'm spending a lot less some days, and I spent a lot more on this one day. Okay, nothing left to do it. But to do it. By the way, did I show you the view? Kind of missed sunset because of the clouds. That's all right. It's been a very moody day. Ah, I feel very refreshed though. I am clean. I took a bath, and then I did my work, which took kind of a while. I spent like an hour and a half on that, and then I just took a shower to wash my hair because I decided. I wanted my hair to be clean tonight in anticipation of the next leg of this trip, which I still have not figured out. Now it's 10 to 7, so I have an hour still till dinner. I'm so hungry. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. I just like, I'm so hungry. <laughs> I usually eat dinner at like 5 at the latest with the kids, 6 when I'm on my own maybe at the late. Yeah, it's all right. It's going to be worth it. We're going to attempt to upload this massive video. Oh my gosh, two hours. Well, it's fine because that computer can just sit there. Hopefully it uploads. That's the hope. And I think I'm going to spread out my yoga mat and do some yoga now. Once you're set up, go ahead, fold yourself forward, relax the head and the neck. Well, friends, when in doubt, just wear black. <laughs> it's got my cleanest black pants on. This is all hiking wear, but we're going to wear it. It'll be fine. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm going to be like one of the only people there at this late. I don't know. It's all good. Let's go. Here's a little look at the lodge. I'm just waiting for my table to be ready. It's so cozy. They have um, this wood chest. They have a little shop with the really sweet. Really nice. Yeah, it's actually way more crowded than I thought it would be. Look at this beautiful china. It's like of the original. And then the menu, it's a, it's a tasty menu, so you pick from each section. I like that. Nice. I even ordered myself a martini. We're celebrating. Sent out in the news. It's a little vlog wrap. Look at this bread. Oh my gosh. So I got a waggy of life to start. Mm, potato leek soup. Got some too many swab salad. Doesn't that look lovely? Lobster. Mm, yum. Dessert is obviously the first course. This is a sort of chiffon cake. I like the huckleberries here, so. It's huckleberry every day. It's huckleberries. Hello, my friends. It is late for me. It's after 10. I'm just trying to get this video to upload. The internet. It's like it only uploads when the computer is not, when the screen isn't sleeping. Whereas when I'm on internet at home, it continues to upload even when it goes, like the screen turns off. Anyway, my belly is full. I'm a little tipsy and I feel very satisfied. Um, I gotta be honest, I didn't, like the bear thing, Oddly enough, didn't stress me out until, like, many hours later. <laughs> then I got really anxious about it. Like, in the few hours before dinner, I got really anxious about it. Then I did my yoga, and I did a little meditation, and I had like, let myself have a drink because it just felt like that was the thing to do. I'm not a big drinker, you guys. I have nothing against it. Personally, I just...
don't drink a lot, so a little bit goes a long way with me, especially in the mountains, especially when i am been very hungry, <laughs> you know? So, um, yeah, I'm nicely sauced. I think I'm going to get a good night's sleep, but um, that calmed me down, and that's good. And I'm looking forward to sleeping. I just really want this video to upload. So, I'm going to do a little bit of research on where I'm going from here on now because I really haven't figured that out yet. Uh, but we've got more things to do tomorrow here, including the included breakfast, which everybody raves about. Staff, at least. <laughs> and uh, the horseback riding. So, I'm looking forward to that. That will wrap up our Grand Tetons experience and we'll move on from there. But uh, until then, I'm going to bed. Good night. Breakfast. You can't even see the mountains today. I'm totally in shroud. Good morning, friends. The lovely Grand Teton National Park weather continues. So there's been a change of plans. Oh my gosh, I slept until after eight, which is unheard of for me. And was lovely. I slept like nine hours, which was really nice. Uh, but it put me into a bit of a panic this morning because I had to like pack up and everything. And anyway, I went to breakfast to check in and for breakfast, and they said that the all the horseback rides were canceled for today because of how wet it is, and the park won't let them do the trail rides when the ground is that wet because it like erodes the trail. I get it. Anyway, I'll talk to you inside. And I'll show you, breakfast was so yummy. Okay, it's a little precarious. And I might have to bend down a little bit, but I actually have you perched up on a mug on the windowsill. So here we are. Right, slept nine hours. It was so restorative. I had such a relaxing afternoon yesterday. You know, the weather's been stinky and there's no way around it. And I'm glad I cut my hike yesterday short by half because the afternoon weather was no bueno. And it, I was really happy that I could check in early and do my yoga and just relax and get my work done. And had that amazing dinner. It was so yummy. And I just like felt really good. <laughs> you guys, I'm such a lightweight. I had my cocktail. I don't know if you saw how like flushed my cheeks were. Um, but it just like, it was all... Perfect. And then I slept for nine hours and I woke up, it was like 8.15. I was like, oh no, because I had the trail ride booked for 10 and I still wanted to do my yoga and stuff. So I just did like a condensed version of my morning routine and I needed to make it to breakfast and pack up my stuff and pack up the car and move the car um, by 10 because the ride is supposed to go longer than when checkout the checkout's at 11, so I wouldn't, I couldn't leave my stuff in the room, essentially. And I was like, oh my god, there's so much to do. And I started to get, a, like, a little, you know, not, like, stressed, but, you know, rushing a bit. So I got everything packed up, not in the car, but in the room. And I went over to breakfast. And I'm at the front desk, and I'm talking to them about, like, logistics, where should I put my car and all that. And the Wrangler, the, not Wrangler, the what do they call her? I think they do call her the Wrangler. Whatever. The main person who manages the horse situation was at the front desk. And she's over here in my conversation. She's like, oh, I'm so sorry. Did nobody call you? We canceled all the rides today because of the poopy weather and that the park won't let them ride with the trick so they don't impact the trail so much. I was like, oh, and I had a, like a little disappointment moment. And then I was like, wait a second now, I don't have to rush. <laughs> uh, so that's because I still have some more work to finish up. Um, I don't show a lot of like the behind the scenes stuff. I just show you like, I talk through my trips and I show you like where I'm staying and what I'm doing and we go hiking together. But I'm also always working when I'm traveling. I'm editing, I'm writing content you know, I'm doing all the back end stuff that you just don't see. The filming of the video is like 10% of the process. Everything else takes up 90% of the, you know, the 90% of the work is in everything else. But uh, alas, that's, if you just want to see me like on my computer, that's 
not really that interesting. Not that any of my other content is that interesting either, because I am a chatty Kathy with the, with the camera, as it turns out. Long story short, now I have about 15 minutes until checkout, and the, where I'm heading next, I have never been, and I don't actually have a plan. It's 10 10, and I don't know where I'm sleeping tonight. And the waiter who actually, um, he helped last night and he waited on me this morning too. I noticed he's on his name tag, he's from where I'm going. And so I picked his brain, he gave me so many good options. So now I have time to finish my work, do a little research, figure out where I'm heading tonight. Anyway, long story short, calm down a little bit. It's just been such a nice time. This is very, very like deluxe special. I could tell just from kind of overhearing conversations in the dining room last night and this morning that it's the kind of place where people come every year and they bring their families or their partners or whatever. Um, I haven't seen any other solo travelers. It's really expensive to do this solo. If you think of like, well, if it's two people for that price, you know, but one person, <laughs> it's a lot more expensive. So that's something to take into consideration. Not that I want to deter any solo travelers from being here. I didn't feel uncomfortable at all. I didn't feel out of place. I'm very comfortable doing this sort of thing solo though, so that can make a difference. Wow, it's really raining. I love how you can hear the rain on the cabin roof too. But I was definitely the only one. That being said, it's also very small. Like I don't think they have more than I don't know what their capacity is, but it's, it's not that huge. And I love that the staff comes and like stays on property. It, it feels very old fashioned in that way, but it's not like cringy old fashioned where, you know, do you know what I mean? I have some of you will get what I mean. Okay, let me show you what I bought because I did buy some things. I have a little shop. I think I panned a little shot over at the gift shop last night. So I bought a couple of things for my kids. Um, I get questions all the time, like, do you bring souvenirs back for your kids? And the short, the short answer is sometimes. Uh, if I brought something back for them every time I traveled somewhere, that would just be too much. It would just be too much. And to me, a gift is more impactful when it's not too much. And they have so much stuff at home already. But when I see something that really, like, I see it and I think, oh, that, they would love that. Um, you can get these jelly cat animals anywhere, but I've never seen these particular ones. And if um, my kids have lovies that they've had since they were four months old, and um, my daughter's is a bunny, so she's obsessed with all things bunnies, and my son's is a fox, and he loves all things fox, and I've never seen these particular um, jelly cat plushies before, so I, I got those for them. And then I bought... I was so good at the um, store yesterday. Oh, did I even show you the stickers that I got? I don't think I did. Um, I, I went to the visitor center, the Jenny Lake Visitor Center, and they had lots of cute things, lots of cute stores and things, and I didn't buy a shirt. Like, I had shirt in my hand. I was like, no, I don't need any more shirts. Well, I bought a shirt because I really liked this one. Not only is it super soft, I just love the artwork on it. Oh, I love that. And Jenny Lake is really the only part of the park that I explored. That being said, I'm going to have to come back and do this park another time and hike bit more and, and see more of it. This is just a tiny, tiny taste of it. Honestly, the weather kind of cramped my plans a little bit. And I just kind of want to move on now. But I will come back another time because it is stunningly beautiful. I will also say, I think... Just with all the bear activity I've been hearing about around here, I think that kind of scared me a little. <laughs> and then she sees a bear anyway. I also bought, kind of to commemorate my bear encounter, <laughs> I bought this little note card. I don't know what I'll use it for, maybe for uh, memory keeping or something. But it's got the mama bear. Actually, it's four baby bears, but two of them are on the tree, and that kind of... Well, that's highly reminiscent of what happened yesterday. And then I got this card with a... Um, what is this, like a watercolor? I don't know, just the artwork of the lodge. And you know I got a sticker. Now speaking of stickers, I don't think I showed you yesterday the stickers that I bought at, that's all I bought at the, um, the visitor center. So I got a little sticker. I think this will, it's not focusing on it. I think this will go on, ooh, I think this will go on my water bottle because I like to put my National Park stickers on my water bottle. And then again, 
Obviously, I like that artwork. They didn't have the shirt there, but they had the sticker, so I got that sticker. And then I got one from the um, boat that I went on. I don't, you guys, I don't know why I keep buying all the stickers, but <laughs> I just like them. And then I really like this one for Grand Teton. I like this artwork. This kind of, um, I don't know, it, it's very reminiscent of something. I have like a retro abstract landscape. Don't ask me. <laughs> Art history major, she has no idea what she's talking about. You know, I forgot all of that information as soon as school is over. I was an excellent student. <laughs> I graduated with highest honors. I'm part of like the oh, some honor society that I just don't keep up with. Pi, beta, kappa, whatever. Some some you know smarty pants thing. <laughs> and I've forgotten ev pretty much everything I learned because I'm just really good at memorizing things, as it turns out. Or it was when I was you know 20. Okay, so last but not least, I did ask in the lodge these little water bottles. I think I showed these in the tour. These are a gift too. So that's nice. We'll take. I don't think I need two. I'll just leave one. Take one for me. It's nice to have like a smaller water bottle like this to leave in the car for when I'm going on. Need just like a smaller vessel. <sighs> but that's it, my friends. So sorry, no horseback ride to share with you today. But honestly, who wants to ride in the pouring rain anyway? And to me, it just it it's fine. So I'm heading out now. I'm gonna wrap this video here. I hope you enjoyed seeing my Grand Teton experience, both camping and luxury cabining. It's like glamping to the nth degree. Um, it was fun. It was really fun. Uh, lots of, you know, I don't know. I just felt really uncertain while I was here. I think it was because of the bears. And then what do you know? I see them anyway. And I'm, I'm fine. But it, I would not want to repeat that in a million years. I would not want to repeat that experience. <sighs> just got to... Put that one behind me and move forward. So I hope you're all well. Thank you for coming along with me on this journey. We are heading onward, so there'll be more to share with you, of course. Whatever you're doing, wherever you are, I'm wishing you well on your journey, whether that's at home, you know, a different kind of journey, or on the road. And I'm wishing you safe and wonderful travels. And uh, onward we go. All right, my friends, take care. Bye.